Welcome back. This is John, Survivalist 2008, and today we'll take a look at a project I built, a one-tube regenerative receiver. The regenerative circuit, or regen, was invented in 1912 and patented in 1914 by American electrical engineer Edwin Armstrong. The regen circuit consisted of an antenna, an antenna coil, and a variable tuning capacitor, all of which provided the tuned circuit. The received signal was fed into a single tube, which served as both a detector for AM and an amplifier for all modes. The output signal was then fed into a separate coil wound on the same bake-like form as the antenna coil and in close proximity. This tickler coil, as it is known, allows for inductive coupling to take place, whereas a small amount of signal is reintroduced many times over back into the tuned circuit input. This positive feedback loop not only provided for signal amplification of the resonant frequency, but it also allowed for the reception of CW and single sideband. To receive AM signals, you adjust the regen control just below the level required for oscillation. If you adjust it too far, the receiver will begin to howl. That's how it got its nickname, the Howler. To receive CW and single sideband, you adjust the regen control just past the point of self-oscillation. My inspiration and information to construct this project came from many sources, but mainly from fellow YouTuber Microwave One. I will provide a link to his YouTube page as well as other pages below. Microwave One, while a youngster in school, picked up a copy of Alfred Morgan's 1954 book entitled Boy's First Book of Radio and Electronics. He was fascinated by the section on how to build a one-tube Morgan Regen, and he was hooked. Later, Microwave One made a few modifications to Morgan's basic schematic, but for all intents and purposes, it remained the same. While Microwave One's receiver design is much more aesthetically pleasing to look at than mine, my design works the same and was a bit easier to build. The front of the receiver has the antenna tremor capacitor control on the left. An on-off switch is in the center, which turns off current flow from the 6-volt DC-A battery through the filament of the 6BF6 tube. The regen control is on the right. The top of the receiver has the interchangeable combination antenna slash tickler coil on the left. The one shown covers the AM broadcast band. In the center is the variable tuning capacitor to the right is the 6BF6 tube with binding posts for connection of either a set of 2000 ohm headphones or an audio output transformer. Looking at the rear of the receiver, we see four binding posts on the left, two for connection of the 6 volt DC A battery to power the tube filament and two for connection of a 90 volt DC B battery to provide the plate voltage. We also see two additional binding posts on the right which is for connection of the antenna. You will see a green switch that provides two extra values of capacitance that can be placed in parallel with the variable tuning capacitor to increase the bandwidth of whichever coil you have plugged in. I have four different antenna coils for receptions of different bands. 
The, the bottom view shows an interesting design feature. A homebrew RF choke seen in the center of the picture and wrapped in black electro, electrical tape. It's wound using number 33 magnet wire on a metal sewing bobbin. Now that we've taken a look at the receiver, I'll take time now to connect the batteries, antenna and ground, and the audio output transformer with a small audio amplifier hooked up, and we'll do a quick demonstration. I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, we've already got the radio hooked up. I have it up, hooked up to an 80 meter outdoor dipole, and it's fed with coax here into the ham shack. It has a matching box outside, which is grounded, so that makes an excellent ground for the radio. The center conductor goes into the regenerative receiver, and it acts more or less as a long wire. We have our A and B batteries hooked up. The white box has 10 9 volt batteries in series, provides the 90 volts for the plate current. And the 4 D batteries back here provides the filament current at 6 volts, which is adequate for the 6BF6. We also have an output transformer hooked up so we can listen to the small Radio Shack uh, speaker and built-in amplifier. And we've got an 80 meter coil here as you've already heard. We are tuned in on 80 meter single sideband. It's quite critical. You have to work with the regenerator control. You have to work with the tuning capacitor and you have to work with the antenna trimmer which acts more or less as a fine tuning knob. Now I have found that capacitive couplets will affect the radio if you're touching the controls with your hand. And I didn't put in an expensive insulated control knob system. So what I've done is took and got a real cheap, this is a prescription bottle, and as you can see I've taped, placed some tape on it, and that tape acts like a little gripper. And when I insert it in over the knob, I can turn it. So that's a cheap way of preventing capacitive couplings. Now let's turn the amplifier back up. Now I'm going to demonstrate the adjustment of the antenna trimmer. Very slow increment. Now if I touch it with my hand, the capacitive coupling will change the frequency a little. See how it sounds? So this little device helps out quite a lot. Alright, that's 80 meters. Let's turn the amplifier down and let's change over to the broadcast coal and see if we can do a real quick demonstration of the broadcast band. Okay, we'll turn the regenerator control back because we're going to be tuning in AM and we don't need it to oscillate. Let's see what we can find here just going through quickly. Now with Andy Dean, 
just want to fill it in, West Moss. You might have heard of her. You probably... I don't know. I know, I know that Andy is a really loyal following. He's probably the s smartest guy in radio. Maybe the smartest, funniest Sounds guy in radio. Sounds pretty good, combo. Yeah. Liberal City came to himself in that spirit and condition. And he came home to his father. And the father said... <laughs> In front of 38,000. You don't need much of the Regina to control for AM radio. You don't want it to go into oscillation, it'll start howling. Okay, let's turn that down just a little bit, and I'd like to show you a few other things before we wrap this up. It's been so long since I've got this radio out and dusted it off that I kind of forgot how to hook it all up. So what I did a long time ago was create this little pictorial diagram of all the connections. That could be very useful. Also, I had such a time, good time tuning in radio years ago that I even started a little log that I kept up with what date and time, the frequency, the call sign, where they were, and I even was able to set up what the uh, antenna settings and the capacitor settings were and the regenerative settings, and I uh, made some program notes. So it was a fun thing to do to go ahead and have that to go along with the regenerative radio. Well, that's a quick demonstration of this particular radio. It's a great radio to learn, a great, great radio to fool around with. It, it is very critical in the tuning. You do have to have a little device that will prevent your capacitive coupling to occur. But if you get all that set up, you'll spend hours and hours and hours enjoying this radio. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for stopping by the Survivalist 2008 channel, and we'll catch you again real soon. Or is it more ridiculous the fact that Joe Biden...